Today on the Mike O'Mara Show. I changed the password for PayPal and I'm like a sting operation. I'm all proud of myself. You know, I'm like, ha ha, I fixed them now. I no fixed more now. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Every team starts you know, with the same amount of money. Are you, are you, I'm sorry, are you done with this fantasy? <laughs> Perhaps. Okay. Perhaps I haven't thought it through totally. One million dollars. <laughs> That's what we start with. One million. As far as when Robert started to be like a little bit more challenging towards authority and stuff, the good news is it only lasts like 10 or 12 years. <laughs> All that and more. The Mike O'Mara Show starts now. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. Hey, uh, starting a brand new feature on The Mike O'Mara Show. We'll do this periodically. Uh, By the way, Osaka, Japan, Oblong, Illinois, Cabot, Vermont, Osage City, Kansas, Mustang Ridge, Texas, and... Dynastia San Sebastian, Spain. This feature is called Would It Be Appropriate Today? Oh. And uh, this one I will play Fascinating. various clips, uh, comedy clips from around the world. And, uh, you know, if the hands go up in the air, because I, I think I've demonstrated that my spidey sense of being 63 uh, Perhaps I'm losing my awareness of uh, what's appropriate. I've certainly made a career out of walking the line. I I, I fancy myself knowledgeable. Uh, so today we it's take you back. It's an ever-changing line, though. So I know it's a, it's, a, it's a curious thing. We take you back to uh, 1974 and a movie that featured uh, some very, very uh, significant future stars, uh, most notably Chevy Chase. Uh, This does not involve, well, it might be Chevy Chase, but uh, this is from a movie called The Groove Tube, 1974, (laughs) and uh, this is a Coco the Clown show. Mm. And uh, I just will play this uh, just for the sake of discussion. If you put your hands up and say, that's quite enough, we will say that's enough. All right. And... uh, uh, this is a clip from a movie, which was really just a conglomeration of sketches. Yeah. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I give you uh, the Coco Show from the Groove Tube and our comedy feature, Would This Be Appropriate Today? Oh, you know what the magic monkey says, boys and girls? It's make-believe time. That's right. And you know what that means. All of the big people in the room have to leave. That's right. They can't take part in make-believe time. Only the little people. So if you're over 10 years old, we want you to leave the room so that the little people can take part in it's make-believe got time. full clown makeup now we're gonna on. we're going to play the music for make-believe time. And by the time that music is over, I only it's want the little people in the monkey puppet right? rhythm. Okay, play the music, Mr. Music Man. There it is. Okay, all the little people 1974. Nearly okay, 40 years ago. Yeah. Are all the little people here for make-believe time? All of the big people are out of the room? <laughs> okay. So he uh, puts the monkey down. Now the puppet is walking over to another side of the room. <laughs> puts the monkey down. Takes his nose off. <laughs> He's getting out okay. books. He's getting out some books. Now I have a... <laughs> Request here from Vicki Ulanette of Fort Wayne. She asks for page 47 of Fanny Hill by John Cleland. Now he takes out a cigarette. He's lighting a I cigarette. I remember this now. <laughs> I lay down then upon the couch, <laughs> and Charles finished undressing himself. Revealing to my eyes that column of what? delight whose impatient gestures signal the prelude <laughs> to love's ecstatic union. Urged on by consuming passion, we were quickly joined in soft embrace, his hands exploring the fiery, moist territory <laughs> whence derived my intoxicating pleasures. 
<laughs> takes a drag. Most the readily, thing. I obeyed my love's soft-spoken command to alter my recumbent position <laughs> that he might gain swift entrance. Oh, there you go. So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, this is a clown on a kid's show uh, reading this. Would it be appropriate today? And I Would it fly like today? It's 50, nearly 50 years ago. 50 today. years old. Yeah. That yeah. is 50 years old. And I think that from the rec recognize the real, I think that's Chevy Chase. It could be. It could I very think well that's be Chevy it. Chase yeah. that's uh, that's doing I, that, but I don't know. I don't think that. I think you could still do this gag on a dark comedy. Yeah, like a, it would play on a Saturday Night Live. Well, I'm I glad think. you said that. So let's continue. But how can I describe the overwhelming bliss which swept through me <laughs> as the delicious velvet tip divided the <laughs> gates of pleasure and the ivory shaft insinuated itself <laughs> to its furthest penetration, Jesus. only to withdraw and plunge again and again. <laughs> That you could not do. <laughs> no, it gets no, more no. graphic, doesn't it? No, yeah, no, you can't, you, do that. you can't do that. You could not do, but I just, I remember, I remember being a kid and being able to sneak into that and watch and that. Was it a rated and, R movie then? Oh, it was oh, a hard R. Hard it's R, not, yeah, then, It was a I think hard that, R. Uh, maybe the rating system hasn't changed that much. Uh, so that's are a you good, saying uh, it you know can't what? happen or 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 it can't? No, it I'm can't saying air. that no, that I sometimes. Look at something that to this day makes me crack up. Yeah, uh, in its wonderful simplicity of uh, of of pure comedy that is just the funny. Language, and the language remains strong, but I don't think the concept is cancelable. Okay, yeah, yeah I, that's, I that's what are, I was curious uh, about. I guess there are um, what is it bits of, akin to this in forty. This is forty. But where, yeah, where the guy like you can see Paul Rudd walking in a room, and then he does like a whole bit, an adult bit to kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, where mm -hmm. he's like talking about his marriage and how relationships are terrible, something along those lines. Yeah, right. He uh, doesn't talk afraid. about the velvet tip. No, but, no. But, but you by don't know well, about that. By the way, I have two minutes left in this, and uh, well, I'm going to continue. All to right, play it. very good. Thoroughly inundated by the tides of pleasure which flowed forth from these violent actions, oh, I yielded Jesus. up the last vestiges of resistance, giving myself entirely to the rapturous rhythm which carried us all too quickly over love's crest and left us exhausted and joyous upon the shore. Yeah, not appropriate. Well, that was an excellent request, Vicky. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Now we have another request here from Kippy Pratt of Springfield, and he asks for page 43 of Philosophy in the Bedroom by Marquis de Sade. <laughs> oh, uh, I see we're running a little late, and I, uh, I'll get to this tomorrow, but I do want to make a special announcement. Uh, uh, it seems a boy from Newton let his parents stay in the room during make-believe time, or at least it was his mother, because she called the station, and it's a good thing the management doesn't watch the show because they thought it was a crank call. But I'm only mentioning this to tell you that really it's very important that you make sure the big people leave the room during make-believe time because if you don't do that, uh, the management will catch on to what we're doing and uh, we'll have to go off the air and I won't be able to take your requests and so on. So really, please, it's very important. Make sure the big people uh, leave the room during make so sensible time. about okay. it. Now, as I said, we'll get to this uh, tomorrow when we'll have uh, more time. We'll get to the end of the show now. You can call the big people back in the room. <laughs> Jerry, you want to hit the music? Hmm? The Coco Show. The Coco Show, yeah. Do you oh, think the people memory. that say that they're out of touch, and this is an honest question. All right. And we have a little bit of an older audience, so this this maybe will resonate with them. There's a level of saying, I don't know what's PC anymore. Mm -hmm. And you, that's an easy, I think, we've all said it in one way or another, especially in broadcasting. Uh, but there's also a different way of looking at it and saying, I don't like what's PC anymore, and that's what some people say oh, when they I'm say. I'm on the fence with that. There, there are, you know, that's a gray area for me because there are multiple times uh, where I, I, I will be on one side with one argument and on another side. I don't think it's that. Uh, to me, they're they're just 
many, many shades of gray mm-hmm. as far as what you can do and what you can say and what's offensive and what's not offensive. Um, and I think that things that in the past uh, I found funny, there are th- I completely and totally understand how they don't resonate well, today, you mm-hmm. know, but there are also moments where I say to myself, oh, come on. Like, like, lighten up, Francis. You know, really lighten well, up really and is. just it's let people g- relax. One of the reasons I think case we're- Case by case basis, really. But I, I mean, also think one of the reasons we're tearing each other's throats out it, are, you know, because of uh, language and, and there's such hypocrisy with it. There's so much hypocrisy out there where, uh, you know, depending on your point of view, oh, look what this person that thinks differently than I did said, mm-hmm. but yet- one of my yeah. comedians can get up and uh, talk about things. It's very, very gray. Yeah, it's but, very dead. But, uh, That's I, I think comedy is a, a, a different um, a genre to even analyze. I'm saying what we say in our in our everyday lives outside of these mm-hmm. microphones, mm-hmm. Uh, where I've had multiple conversations with people, and I've had to learn as well. Sure, I'm not beyond um, you know opening my mind and being no, educated. Your potty mouth is what you are, and you're, you're, a, I, I, you're a troublemaker. Like for. For me, I just I think it's it's a fascinating time because even and I'll give you the best example for 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 kids, right? This is the, so so. Let's look at like the overall social dynamics of social dynamics of kids. We learn the behaviors of our parents. We learn the behaviors of our of of our environment, right? Yeah. We are a product of our environment, and in in certain cultures, there's certain ways of uh, demeaning one's manliness, for example. And I have seen in real time. Mm-hmm. Uh, not our Bolivian culture, we have our own issues, but in other cultures, somebody uh, used that typical, like, oh, why aren't, why aren't you a real man? Or, but use, well, what used what's to your be. point, Nancy? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just well, I mean, that's sorry. exactly what I'm talking I'm about, sorry. right? In that same vein. I know. Where, it's where um, trying to have a little fun. Where, folks. Where, no, but this is an honest conversation where I've seen this happen in real time, and then the same person will use it in mixed company. Right like at their high school or middle school, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then they wonder why they're getting such backlash. Well, the at most school. recent pop culture example would be Tiger Woods handing Justin Thomas a tampon. Ah, uh, yes, yes. When he outdrove him, yeah. and uh, it went away. And that, by the way, I think that's how you judge it based on the hurtfulness of it and everything. It was juvenile. He took a little crap for 24 hours, and then it went away. Because it, Am that's I the exactly only one who it saw it as a courtesy? <laughs> I mean, he might have needed it. <laughs> it, was, it was a juvenile prank. Yes. And between jocks, uh, you know, it was, it was over. I mean, he dropped it, and they, they moved on. But social media had a moment. Now, I judge the level of uh, offense Based on how long something like that lasts. I don't think there was much more fallout from that after that. But at the same time, uh, I'm sure there's a subset of people in this country that would love to have greater fallout for something mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, was it particularly funny? Not really. And was it particularly inappropriate? A little bit. But that's it. That's why. You know, that's that's the the way the way it goes, you know. But I see, mean, so that's. Weird. That's your personal opinion or that's how you feel because of the way that people responded to it? I think that my personal opinion would be that was, uh, I, I based I based my opinion on how people responded. Yeah. I think if that was something really egregious, uh, you know, it, it would probably last longer. I don't think it matters at all. It's two jocks doing something stupid. Right. And I think most people looked at it that way. That's my yeah. opinion. I don't. What do you? I, I, yeah, well, I, I actually I saw that and I was first I thought he was an idiot for doing it because regardless of it being juvenile, um, with his checkered past and the way that he's like had to wear this the scarlet letter for uh, the infidelity, yeah, yeah, the the multiple affairs, the lies, all of that. Like, why would you even let that lens fog up and do something stupid like that? And then two. Um, it doesn't matter who's doing it because it's not like it's not them that's going to be offended or us that's going to be offended personally. It's uh, it could be a whole different subset of customers for his uh, for his sponsor, his brand. Yeah, 
I like to think of the fact that uh, he thought ahead. That's not a spontaneous thing. He had no, to bring he that. It. He had to bring it with him. A premeditated oh, bad bit. Yeah, and I think that's funny. Yeah. Uh, the, the thought of that is, is funny to me, the, the behind the scenes. But it really is a case-by-case basis, and it is a blurry line at best. And I like your notion of letting sort of society decide what's too far. <laughs> if it sticks, it sticks. And it's interesting you know, as I speak to Jeff Bezos over here, <laughs> that uh, you brought it into a financial area where he's thinking about his brand and his customers. Well, That's he's interesting. Not. You're Cle- looking he's at it like not. a GM would look he's at it. He's clearly not. Yeah, I mean, I, I, but I mean, well, I'm that's talking his bottom about, line, yeah. It, 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 take yourself out of that. How do you feel? I mean, it, I looked at it as, as a dumb jock doing something. I think, I think. Dumb. I don't even class- silly. I don't even classify him. I don't even have that jock lens, Mike. I think I literally look at him. I was like, "That's a bad bit." My personal opinion. It's not even clever. This is something that it's not clever. No, it, it was such a lazy attempt to to like I guess break balls. Yeah, and like it wasn't worth it. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, it, it probably wasn't, but, uh, you know, he, he caught some flack because yeah. maybe he didn't. I don't know. You think he's naive enough to know the cameras wouldn't see that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe sometimes after they hit and they walk, uh, you know, the cameras go off them and they yeah. move on to something else. So True. maybe he didn't. You know, that that could have been the case. But anyway, bad bit. Yeah, bad bad bit with that. But that's the most recent thing. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, when you look at, uh my favorite comedian of all time, George Carlin, and you look at his old stuff, his old stuff holds up. Mm -hmm. His old stuff is, is delivered in such a way where it's just funny. And if you are offended, uh, any group that's offended, you're going to be offended by George Carlin. And I think George Carlin uh, was trying to do comedy is so hard for people now to get up on that stage And be innovative. Everybody wants the edge. I live this world. Mm -hmm. I live this world as a shock jock where they want the edge. Oh, does management want the edge? Because the edge means ratings. Right. And the best example of the edge was Howard Stern, who went uh, above and beyond and over the edge many times, took no prisoners and had uh, and was rewarded for it. Uh, and Howard got away with a lot more because Howard was more powerful because Howard had bigger ratings. Mm -hmm. That's the way that roared. But the idea of, I just, what I hate and what I've always hated is the hypocrisy and the, the hypocrisy is what, uh, what kills me about something. So I look at something and I literally don't know. I said, this is funny to me. Would this be funny and appropriate I think, I think in today's you, because when you're talking about it, I'm the father of three children. I don't like the idea of doing it, but this is just silly, funny, stupid. Yeah. And I love silly, funny, stupid. Let I really me, do. Let it's me ask like you Jerry. a question. I've known you a long, long time, and I've never asked you this. Back in the most shocking days of your career, the true shock jock days, it predated social media and, you know, instant feedback and all that stuff that would make it easier to gauge where you're at. At an instant basis. You know, if, if something goes haywire now, mm-hmm. it's all over everything right away. What did you use as a gauge then to figure out where you were? Was it simply the intergovernment or did you, did you, I mean, did you just go with your wasn't gut? wasn't my call. I was the second banana. That okay. was not my call. There were things that were done that uh, I was all in on. And there were things that uh, were done that, uh, that I created. And there were things that, uh, that I went along for the ride. And there were things that personally I didn't enjoy yeah. that much that I went along uh, with the ride because it was just, uh, I don't know. I, I just thought it was, you know, there's one particular, you probably remember it. Yeah. Uh, the Monica Lewinsky yeah. bit. Yeah. And I don't mind saying it now. Uh, I, I it, Hate would not be a strong enough word for how I felt. Being up there on that didn't like, yeah. it. and it was didn't, it was didn't like. Not that I felt uncomfortable, just that I thought it's gross, it's nasty. It's Even just, at a young age, I felt that there was shocking could be entertaining, but also if it was just shocking to be shocking, which that to me, which that's yeah. what that was. I thought it was. That's yeah. that's that's weak. You know, that's um, there's no creativity but, attached. You to know, it. people went crazy. Yeah, they did. Uh, you know, so I mean, it was uh, you know, and that's where the you know, the line is, is different for everybody, but as far as comedians are concerned, 
I just think that sometimes you got to chill out. And when you've got all the, I think our society right now, you have more comedians and more people in, uh, in the, in the world of making people laugh that are fighting battles yeah. uh, with certain people that it just makes it sad. And we're out there. I have never, I, if I sit there and I dwell on it, I get so messed up in the head because I really believe that, that you should be sensitive to your fellow man. Yeah. You should lift people up. You should not, you should not try to hurt the people that are hurting. Uh, and at the same time, having a laugh is not the area where you throw your darts. You throw your darts at people that make policy and people that do that and and work your ass off for that. But let the comedians have a little I wider. Think, birth. I think you can still be funny. And I, I, what's on Sirius? It's Netflix is a joke radio. Yeah. It's all just bits from Netflix comedy specials. And there are some bits where I'm like, whoa, that was that was a little over the line, not because I'm prude, but like, I can't believe they're playing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I know what I'm getting into on that station. Right. The only, I guess the only backlash we've seen as of late for comedians has been Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Yeah. True. I mean that he's the one that uh, fought uh, the battle yeah. with that. One thing, if you listen to any of the uh, comedy networks where there's stand up, you realize just how skewed is the world of stand up comedy from uh, New York City. How many of these guys are from New York? Yeah. How many are from There's, New uh, is it, York? It's amazing to me. It's, How many guys are there? So I uh, I was coming over here, and I know where, uh, which is, it's pretty stunning where's, where's, when you think about it. Where's Burt Kreis, uh, Kreisler from? Bert. I'm not sure. Right? I'm not sure. I, I got to figure know. that out. Bert? Yes. I, I need more. I, I don't know the name. Yeah, he's one of the most popular comedians in the um, world. Inappropriate. Oh, that's why one of, I'll yes. tell you one of the greatest inappropriate uh, bits and one of the funniest bits ever created. I think it put Funny or Die over the top. I think it made Funny or Die, and that's between two ferns with Zach Galifianakis, and he does a segment with Natalie Portman that is so inappropriate, but so funny, and she plays it so perfectly that. You know, but the strategy there, I think, is is no different than comedy has been for centu yeah. literally centuries. Oh, it's an old bit. Is taking someone who is important or viewed as right. important and right. knocking them down. It's the oh, same thing 100%. about attacking the government. It's the same yeah. thing about, I mean, why are there so many funny jokes about golf? Because golfers right. take themselves seriously, you mm -hmm. know? And it's any it's it's deflating that sort of notion. Of of that, and Do you I, really want to see a funny bit in a movie. There's a movie, and you and you want to make uh, have fun. Uh, yeah. a comedy about golfers. It's a movie called Falling Down. That is and, funny. Uh, I love check it. out the scene where he's walking across the fairway. This is my golf course, and then the guy has a heart attack. It's just it is, will slay you. Is that the golf movie with the gopher? <laughs> no. no, no, no. By the way, speaking of that movie, yeah, uh, we didn't talk about this that much after the Super Bowl. Oh, the commercial. I thought, <laughs> I thought that th those com those Caddyshack commercials were as sucky as sucky could be. I agree. I thought they were. Uh, uh, they just were, it just didn't land. It didn't land because you know why it didn't land. Caddyshack and the script. Is not a good script. Not it's even horrible. close to a good script. The only thing that makes Caddyshack work are the people playing the roles. Rodney, mm. uh, Bill Murray, Chevy Chase. Ted Knight. Playing those roles. Ted Knight. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You're right. It doesn't work at all. And they they try to, I don't know what they were going for. You Mike, know, who knows? Yes, So Oscar. the bit this morning from Burt Kreischer, uh, if, if you've seen him on a multiple podcasts, and... And he's uh, just a you know world renowned stand up comedian. He's like a top three in the country now. Okay. Right? He we're driving in this morning with, with my wife, and we don't have kids. But if we had kids, I think I'd still laugh, and I'd be just I'd let it roll. But I'd probably be a bad father. Maybe he's it's doing okay his, to be a bad father. He's if doing, that's the case, then I'm guilty of being the worst mm -hmm. father. In the he's world. doing a bit about putting his daughters to, to bed when he's watching them. Yeah. And his wife is out of town. Something like that. He's got two daughters, apparently, and he gets home. He just wants to get him to bed and move on. And they're like, don't we have to take a bath? And he goes, no, take a horse bath. <laughs> and then they're like, he what? says that to his daughter, to his daughters. Mm -hmm. They're like, what do you mean? A horse bath. You don't know what a horse bath is. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they're like, no, daddy. And he says, we're going to have to bleep this out. He says, pits and p- <laughs> Just wash those and then jump in bed. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's funny. That's inappropriate. I, it and was funny. so funny. Yeah. It's funny. I'm, I am like yeah. we're on 19th Street, and I'm roll. I'm going. I'm ah. about to roll into some cars. I'm just guffawing. Hysterical. <laughs> yes. Hysterical. I'll have to check that guy out because I haven't seen uh, his stuff. But the way so. he's put that, like his everybody has a routine to put their kids to bed. Right. He right. just wants to get them out of his like his line of sight, mm. and then get a cocktail. And just we've, relax. we've all been there. Uh, we've all been there. There are times when you want to just... Speaking of. Yeah. All right. Three issues right now. We are at the transition three. age right now. I, I, you you can offer insight to me about this. All right. Uh, because, you know, uh, you have a son. Uh, yes, I nine, do. Nine. The age of nine. Did you find that that was kind of nine. a transition age as yes. far as... Uh, as a matter of fact, respects, I did. Yeah, that's R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Is that, uh, so. that puts uh, third grade, right? Is that right? Uh, he will be, yeah, he is in third grade. Yeah, yeah. third grade yeah. is a is a transitory time. And it is I, transitory. I rem- and uh, I remember it, this, yeah. And it's getting, uh, you know, it's it's managed, but it is still getting to the point where, uh, you know, it's a, it's a respect transition that's happening right now. In and I'm way? finding myself, well, I'm finding myself uh, having to put the hammer down more than I should. You know, well, not more than I should enough. Yeah. But it's really getting to a point where, you know, uh, all right, let me let me categorize it. Uh, Wanting stuff is is more important than it's ever been. Yep. Uh, Getting frustrated with being called out on behavior is more intense than it's been. Mm -hmm. And getting him to do what is required of him is more problematic than it's uh, than it's been. And he's challenging you, but at the same time, you know, we don't mess around in our house. We win. I mean, it's not, you don't give up, but you can see this is a moment. If you take the, uh, the other side where you decide you don't want to hassle with it, it's game set and match. In my opinion, this is when, this is when the heaviness starts to come in, you know, Mm -hmm. and I will tell you that it's getting to the point last night. Uh, right towards the end, I'm trying to think uh, something about his phone in his bedroom after bedtime, and I I laughed because it was right on the heels of a purchase for V-Bucks that was not authorized, a $9 purchase, and that's just not acceptable. Right. You can't do that without telling. And then the phone, and I said, oh, my God. And he's like, Dad, I didn't. I said, hey, you know. And I gave him the Irish look, you know, mm-hmm. where, listen, you, you, you're not good, you. I, I, I'm I, finding that uh, we're at a moment and every inch of being the older father uh, comes crashing down because I'm saying, okay, I got to I gotta stand my ground here. It's just a transition it's, time. It I really think is. it's quite typical, especially with now, Julia, her transitory was a little older. And Julia, to be honest, was almost problem free. As a child growing up, until that, uh, until Julia, J- and Julia, Julia Jelly Jelly Bean. Bean. yeah, that that was about fourth grade for her, and she bounced back from that. But we really had to put the hammer down to make that, you know, to stop that in its tracks. But you, Mike, uh, as far as when Robert started to be like a little bit more challenging towards authority and stuff, the good news is it only lasts like ten or twelve years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something where, and the dishonesty factor. Sure. You know, I mean, well, the I boundaries mean, the boundaries aren't tested with direct confrontation nearly as much as they are what they can get away with. It is, there is a comic. Oscar, be prepared if you ever go through this. Oh, well, I'm just going to beat him. I remember, no, don't do that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I forget first. the comic who said, but there was a comic who said he had like a young kid and he said, I watched him discover lying. And he yeah. said, you mean I can just say something that isn't true? Isn't that where the transition for human beings happens? Yes. As soon as dishonesty is rewarded, which it is for human beings. Not even just uh, rewarded, but accepted. Accepted. Yeah. In their own minds. Exactly. We don't accept it, uh, obviously. But, you know, any fantasy you harbor, uh, and look, if there are exceptions 
drop me a line. I would love to hear it. I'd love to hear how you deal with it. Mm. If there are exceptions to the rule about the honesty factor, I will welcome it. But I think it's when, you know, the pivot, the great pivot. Because if you think about us as creatures, mm-hmm. right? What is the worst thing human beings do? They do something horrible Podcasts. and they and they, <laughs> they do something horrible and they lie about it. Yeah. And then it's degree, it's right? So easy it's to, degree. It's so easy to bust people though. Especially Oh, it's very easy like to bust right people, now, but it's, it's not but it's not essential to bust no, people. No, look, look, if you ever have pro tip for everybody at home. Yeah. This is for uh kids, adults, whatever. Who cares? If you're smart enough to run your home router, which everybody thinks is daunting, it's not. You're literally logging with a password on the back of it. The company gives you everything. When you log in, if you really want to see what your kid's looking at, or your wife, or your husband, whatever, use those credentials on the back of your router. Log in, and you can see everybody's activity. Mm -hmm. So, for kids, are you up late? What's your usage? All of that. Those tools are given to you by every big cable provider, internet provider, ISP, whatever, uh, in the world. And you get to use those. And I've seen them used at my sister's house in real time when they shut everything down at 11 or my brother-in-law is going through the browser history of his son and or daughter and make sure that they're not uh, doing anything, you know, or doing some dot RU transition. Have you ever done that, Rob? I never have. I never have. I've looked at their history on their computers. Or or they're they're not buying meth uh, from from Canada, right? Right. So, like... So the tools are there. The tools are so... They're there. They're in front of us. So I remember when I was a kid... It was like the third degree to my brother and sister. Did you call so and so? You couldn't call the phone company and get your phone records. Forget about that. Right, right. right. Yeah. The, uh, I changed the password for PayPal, and I'm like a sting operation. I'm all proud yeah. of myself. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Ha-ha, I fixed them now. <laughs> no more fee bucks. That's right. Yeah. yeah, he can't now. Once I do that at my computer, he can't do it anymore. Right? He's got a. He he's got a re. Uh, he's got to put the Re-log correct, in. correct correct credentials right. and authorize that that device. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, no fuss, no muss. But I like the ideas that you have. And yeah. I might need a tutorial. A full on dashboard of everything that's gone on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. I like that. Notice the way Rob and I both said uh huh the same way. That uh huh, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to give a f about this. Well, we're no, not going to do that. it. I, thank God it's, I'm past it. You know, they're right. I you don't... wouldn't do it if you weren't past it. Well, I did. No, you might have done it. You might have done it during the. Uh, the Dillinger era. Yeah. The and, Julia Jelly Bean. And I did these spot checks on their history. You know, yeah. I did I did check on it. I didn't have to go deep enough that it was going to be- But it sounds to me what Oscar's talking about is that they've got the system sure. where they can sit yeah. at their laptop, go in there, and they like do an, it all the time, like and they know exactly banking. what's mm-hmm. going on. You see all it's, the transactions, but oh, you see fantastic. all the history. Mm-hmm. That's good. I like that. I like that indeed. I think that's a wonderful and idea. Carla comes in and says, "Why is he watching so many videos about women in bikinis fishing?" He said, uh, oh. <laughs> so we're trying. We, we're also we're also doing a little healthy diet thing now because we're cutting down on sugar. Yeah, and most kids, especially right around Valentine's Day or Halloween, you know, sugar becomes a part of that. He's not out of control with that, but he is a growing boy and he's sprouting and he's he's getting hungry. The other night. We put him down to bed and he's walking. He sort of, Carla puts him to bed and he's backing into the bedroom. And she looks <laughs> and behind him in his pajama, he's got his shirt off and his pajama bottoms. And tucked into his pajama bottoms right at his waistline are two slices of bread. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is a pro. It's like I've got a prisoner. Pro tip, I've got Omera, a prisoner. Omera, yeah. Omera, Omera, he, like He's calling his friend saying, playbook. He's calling yeah. his friend saying, yeah, I got the carbs. Yeah, I got him. Exactly. I got yeah, the exactly. carbs. I, he'd never do that with a protein. But a carb, <laughs> baby, absolutely. If he could have gotten a cinnamon roll in there, he would have done that too. Uh, so anyway, uh, kids say the diet is nice. safe. Uh, All right, I want to do this when we uh, when we come back. A, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of restructuring. If you like your news in our second segment, we're doing it the third now more okay. than Because I want to talk about the NFL. Been following the oh, off good. season, good. and I have a very unorthodox idea for the National Football League. For those of you that follow the off season, which seems to be more and more every year, we'll be right back. TMOS traverses the internet and boldly goes into new territory. Podcasting as we know it will be changed forever as TMOS brings you the future now. It's the TMOS TikTok takeover. 
Catch the unrivaled comedy on the go, live as it happens. Laughs tailor-made for your busy lifestyle. It's the TMOS TikTok Takeover. Technology. Synergy. And all the your pants hilarity that you've come to expect from TMOS. It's TMOS streaming live on TikTok. Watch it. It's about damn time. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Looking to get your financial future organized? If you don't have life insurance yet, that should be at the top of your list. Fabric by Gerber Life is what you need. With life insurance and other family finance solutions all in one place, Fabric has great policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply and then tailor your quote to fit your family's needs. Fabric was specifically designed to give parents like you affordable term life insurance. Plus, Fabric has a 30-day money-back guarantee and you can cancel at any time. Fabric was designed by parents for parents to help you get a high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutos. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash TMOS. That's meetfabric.com slash TMOS. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash TMOS. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company. Not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. Okay, I've been meaning to talk about this for a while. So, uh, the NFL. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. Boy, Jim Nance. Back off my friend Jim Nance. He's the who best. Made a movie, who made a movie reference during the football game. And it, yes, it was a much older movie than he said, but come on, what back off. What was Birth oh, of a Nation? God, what was the movie he was talking about? Oh, now I'm going to have to huge squeeze. I made a huge squeeze. I'll pack for you one. We'll just share yeah, mine. Yeah, what was it? I was at the art auction at the end of the, uh, the after auction. Yeah. And there was a uh, a drawing on paper, but tr- like charcoal. Yeah, art. yeah, yeah. And, it, and I said, uh, up next, and I named the artist. And I said, uh, "Give me uh, Titanic vibes. Paint me like my French. Paint me like my French girls. Uh, paint me like your French girls, Jack." Yeah. Uh, and and I said, "Anybody a fan of Titanic?" <laughs> oh no, crickets. Crickets. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe not a Titanic crowd. That's the worst crowd. feeling. Isn't yeah. It? Because it was a tasteful nude, Mike. That's like when I said uh, right at the beginning of COVID, I said, hey, I'm uh, so glad I got a chance to uh, shake all of your hands. And I really look forward to uh, getting my COVID test results tomorrow. Crickets. Where, yeah, I, where, I, should have re- where I should have recoiled is with anybody a Titanic fan. Yeah. Crickets. I should have read the room right away. Yeah. But I went in for paint me like your French girls, Jack, because it was a topless lady. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was and, a problem. And yeah. then nothing. Mm-hmm. I said, never mind. Let's start the bidding at forty dollars. You see, that's a, that's one way out. But you can also, in a situation like that, double down and over-explain it. Sometimes people love seeing the awkward. Oh, I ejected. Um, oh, I don't know. So Jim Nance gets this crap from people during the uh, CBS coverage of the final round of the Genesis Open, the oh, I'm uh, sorry. one out in L.A. CBS, Riviera. Yeah, CBS. Uh, Jim Nance made a pretty bizarre movie reference. It's not bizarre. He just bizarre? It was a slip of the tongue. He said, following John Rahm's birdie to stretch his lead on Sunday, uh, Jim Nance said, to quote a Steven Spielberg movie that came out last year, catch me if you can. Oh, <laughs> what? No, that last is year? Egregious. This movie was 20 years ago. That 21 guy. years ago. That was two marriages ago. Yes. Yeah. To quote the current Clark Gable movie, I don't give a damn. Get him. Get off his ass. I love Jim Nance. I do Jim too. Nance, by the way, national treasure. He is he's one of the best in the business. Not just that he was a friend of the show and is a friend of the yeah. show. I just I think he's the best. I that's think he's not fair. You gotta let and, uh, that, think, that pass and slide. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's give that's he might have so, been thinking of the Fablemans. <laughs> so let me tell you this. <laughs> the idea of the NFL. I'm watching because I care about my beloved New York Giants. And it's a very, very tricky, like many NFL teams, tricky to negotiate and navigate the offseason yes. with franchise tags and free agent negotiations and who to pick up and who to let go. And it goes back and forth. It's tricky. And all of this crap about the salary cap and, you know, how much cap room they have and what. 
I'm not a certified public accountant. All right. I'm a football fan. Yeah, you are. And you know what? And I also believe that, you know, teams that draft well and get a great player uh, like a Patrick Mahomes should be rewarded like they were this year with the Super Bowl. I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I think you have teams that wallow in obscurity season after season after season after season. And I would imagine for those fans in those certain markets, it's got to be awfully frustrating to wait 20, 30, 40, in Detroit's case, one million years yeah, history uh, of the for franchise, their team yeah. So I wrote this down. Socialism in the NFL may be more fun. Here's, here's my plan. All right. As opposed to all of this salary cap stuff. All right. You have tiers. You have tiers, like a flat tax, right? Okay. You have a flat tax with certain players that are, let's say it's an A, B, and a C category. All right. After a season, you grade your players. Every team gets the exact same budget. All right? And look, you're going to say this is a killing capitalism. Isn't it a little silly that these salaries are uh, to a level now where... You know, it's more than these guys will ever need in their lifetimes. I think that's fair. And you can still have uh, a tier structure where it's more than they will ever need in their lifetimes. But everybody gets that tier structure. I see. So you get to, you get, now hold on, Mr. Capitalist, before you continue. I think every, what if every year. Yes. Two things happen. You get to keep the guys you like. All right. You keep the guys you like. And then after that, everybody starts with. The money that's left. How over. many players are they allowed to keep? Well, the the roster, like a roster of players, and then every team has a every team every season starts with the same amount of money. Every team Do starts you know, with the same amount of money. Are you, are you, I'm sorry, are you done with this fantasy? <laughs> hmm, perhaps. Okay. Perhaps I haven't thought it through totally. <laughs> One million dollars. That's what we start with. One million. Yeah, because like you have Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, great yeah. season. Yes. Uh, uh, we designate Patrick Mahomes as our A player well, that's for, a, the for, next, you can, you can for the next the 10 fr- years. For the franchise for the, tag? The, hold on. Next 10 years, we know franchise tag is only for a season. So you actually designate Patrick Mahomes as our A player for the next 10 seasons. Okay. So you've got $400 million. You've got to give Patrick Mahomes because an A player gets $40 million a year. Yeah. But if Patrick Mahomes uh, starts to suck wind, Mm -hmm. you're saddled with with that. And they can still leave. If they don't like the term, they can still leave. What about a variant where... Every, say, July 5th, because we get the fourth off anyway, every July 5th, all teams have to draft a brand new team. What? Okay. Why don't you stay out of this? All right? I'm so I sorry. Am... I thought you had something serious no. to add Is it to really that different from the system that I, I, already exists? It's a, it's a two-sided market. Salary cap. It's a, well, blah, 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 it's a two-sided blah, blah. market. You're, you're looking at it from the owner's perspective and, and the team's perspective. Some players just don't want to stay. And if they don't want to stay, you can't keep them there. They can, you know, there's a contract in place, but well, you can, no. they can if demand. If you have a 10-year contract and you've signed it, you can you've chosen to stay. Oh, you can, uh, Mike, these contracts are not ironclad. It goes both ways. Yeah, uh, but I'm saying that's the thing. I'm just talking about the confusion of cap space and... You want to make it easier. The numbers, the numbers are not perfectly lined up for me when you talk about cap space how he's gonna how do you and i'm gonna be very transparent here i know the cap the the cap uh, you know what i don't know enough about the cap to understand and and it's confusing yeah well i'm not the only way the only this is what i understand about any salary cap in any league is this prevents this actually it's supposed to keep a team within a certain budget so they so, can't buy the championship. So they can't buy the championship. Right. right. So if they go over, they are penalized in a mo- in a monetary way, and that's supposed to keep some sort of parity across the league. All right. Let me read up. Uh, this comes from Bleacher Report, I believe. Yes. All right. 
says the salary cap rules are some of the hardest things to keep track of in football. Contracts aren't always clear. That's the part I have trouble yes. with on how much of a hit certain teams are taking in regards to cap space. And it can be difficult for fans to keep track of. Well, what is this all designed for? It's designed for the fans. It's designed for the people that pay the salaries of these Mark. players and get these owners richer. That's the point. So make it so it's a little easier give, to understand. Give Marco the headset in the other room, our young buck from AU. That's yeah, a sports right. Marco is here today. I know Marco you, I, wants in on this well, discussion. Well, I figure that he's got to know more than we know, for sure. God's sakes. What do you know about a the salary, salary cap? Before he goes okay. on, Marco, a salary cap is essentially an agreement uh, between, hey, I have old eyes, uh, an agreement between the league and players that places a limit on the amount of money a team can spend on salaries for players. The NFL uses a hard cap, meaning that no team is allowed to exceed the cap limit for any reason. All right. All right. That's all. Young That's blood. All. What, what say you? Uh, okay. So I'm a lot more familiar with the NBA salary Give cap than the NFL. Oh, okay. And so <clears throat> the NBA also has a hard cap, but... If you go over it, you pay what's called a luxury tax. Correct. Which that's I, the same in the NFL. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it's one. The owner pays one dollar for every dollar they spend over the cap. Mm. <clears throat> Do they so use they, that money to buy lozenges? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I need I need to use my yeah, money about, to buy lozenges. How about, how about you bring a water in there? Keep it it for, for the. Uh, all right. So thank you, right, thank you, Marco. Right. That was really great. Don't put that on your reel. <laughs> so it's a, a certain well in a way I'm what I'm saying the cap is a certain number right right uh let me see what it is for 2023 but this is does the luxury tax if it's paid it goes what to it the goes league? into the league okay. into the pot right? right you're not paying it to, to keep Sam. parking costs down well just the overall like just in case an elevator breaks at headquarters uh <laughs> you know like a condo fee we really need to get this elevator yeah. fixed <laughs> Roger 2023 NFL salary cap. All 32 teams ranked with that cap. I don't want that. God damn it. Don't be fussy. Uh, no, it's just uh, the salary cap for the 2023 season is set at $224.8 million. That's the crap I hate. That's the account. You know what's sad? I, I used to know so much more about this when, when Fox was in the NFL. And it's he not was, that sad. He was, That's uh, a $20 million increase. I'd love to get Fox to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, well, him. this is what's, uh, what's, what's great is um, Fox would humor all my questions yeah. when we were younger. And we'd see each other on a regular basis now. I just watch him on TV. Um, and By the way, uh, I know that he was on, he was on um, The Daily Show as yes. a guest. Congratulations. He looked great. He killed. He was fantastic. Is Trevor Noah gone from that Trevor show? Trevor Noah's gone. Um, they're still having the rotating cast yes. of hosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Foxworth was on when D.L. Hughley was on, and he killed as usual. Um, but I, I say this to mention that that the tax itself, outside of the parody for the teams, mm-hmm. um, that's just one side of the economy for. The players. The players also have certain minimums and what they want, right, Mike? Yeah, so, and in and in the players' case, it's the Howard Stern radio factor, correct. Mm-hmm. where there are superstars who collect insane amount of money, and then you have the second tier guys that get decent money, and then you have everybody else yeah. that kind of you know wallows and in well, the. And the uh, they work on the commission, the and the majority yeah. for as violent as the sport is, and, and this might be a uh, you know something you've heard in the past. The reason why, the, and to this day, most NFL athletes are like, hey, we have an average lifespan of three and a half years, maybe four if we're lucky. Um, we don't get the endorsements at a very high clip because unless you're a superstar, people don't recognize your face because they're wearing helmets the entire time mm-hmm. you're on the field. Mm-hmm. And in the NBA, you know, you're on television, your face, your persona, everything's there. Yeah. Uh, the advent of you know, TikTok and being an influencer, that has changed some of that paradigm. But at the end of the day, it's a violent sport and it's more violent than basketball and baseball mm-hmm. and pickleball and, and pickleball. Thank you, Rob, for that tipping. Uh, <laughs> but, pickleball. but pickleball. overall, Such an ass. I, 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 I'm still on the side of the players where it, it's we, we saw this, um, you know, in, in Buffalo this past year where you, your life could end yeah. when you're out there. So give they're, them they're as the much hole. as they can. 
They're in the hole by 16 million, by the way. Jimmy, Buffalo. Worst team in the hole, uh, the Buccaneers. They're fifteen. They're fifty five million dollars over the cap. Mm. You want to know the team that's got the Brady? You want to know the cheapos? The cheapos. The uh, the Bears have ninety four million, almost one hundred million dollars of. They're saving up for a stadium. (laughs) Saving up. Yeah, we'll keep you posted. Giants are number four. They've got a lot of cap space. Hope Uh, they use it. Meanwhile, the the Commanders were cited for paying under minimum wage. Commanders uh, are not in good shape. They've only got eight million. That's a shame. That. Bad deal. Yeah, that's a shame. Very yeah. very bad mm. deals. Bad deals. Uh, by the way, uh, if you win, doesn't matter what that number is. Yes, it's true. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Learn how to win big and get the secrets on chowing down. All on this week's bonus show. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to the Coin Pusher. That was shot on an iPhone six. <laughs> Do I look like I get? I don't get nauseous. <laughs> Small French fries. If you put, if you're putting bundle. On something, you effers. That is not a bundle. I will have a quarter pounder and a scrot of fries. <laughs> Stuff some uh, circus peanuts down my throat and then top it off with lo mein. I'm what? not <laughs> getting <laughs> nausea. It's basically alcohol with lemonade. You don't know anything about that, do you? Let's change the topic. <laughs> you can't win if you don't play and you won't laugh until you subscribe. Win big on hilarity today at MikeOmeraShow.com. Please go shopping. We're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sweet nectar that I see oh, in my yay, wonderful liquid cup IV. of liquid IV. Woo. You make me feel good. You make me feel happy. You sober me up <laughs> when I'm feeling crappy. Liquid IV, I love you so much. Your flavors are wonderful. Passion fruit and such. <laughs> yes, sirree, liquid <laughs> IV makes me sing. And I will continue to drink it. Let the bells ring. (laughs) There's no better way to maximize your day than by making sure you're feeling like your best self. Liquid IV is the category winning hydration brand fueling your well-being. And their hydration multiplier just may be the one product you're missing in your daily routine in just one stick. You get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration. You're going to love it. Before a workout, after a workout, before you feel run down, if you feel run down, after a long flight, after a long night, Liquid IV, premium ingredients, non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy, and they have donated 25 million servings in over 50 countries around the world because they care about our planet. The best way to start your day. Be like me. Drink Liquid IV. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use promo code TMOS at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the homepage. This is the homepage, ladies and gentlemen. We start today with a, a pretty rare occurrence, and it hasn't happened in years, but the Rolling Stones are working with the Beatles, uh, well, the remaining Beatles. Sources say Paul McCartney has recorded bass parts for the Stones' upcoming album, and Ringo Starr is expected to play on it, too. Uh, the Stones have been working on the album for years, which means that it will also include the work of original drummer Charlie Watts, who died last year. It'll be their first album of original material since A Bigger Bang in 2005. And uh, you know anything about this, musicologist? It's been a long time since A Bigger Bang. I didn't know it was that long ago. Well, I mean, they lost a bassist, they lost a drummer, Mm -hmm. there was two floating around. I don't know if this is going to be anything more than a gimmick. Ringo's style does not really mesh with Rolling Stone style drumming. So I'll be pleased to hear them do new music. Their last album, Lonesome and Blue, which was all blues covers, was fantastic. I loved it. So we'll we'll see see what they have. Tough for them to churn out crap, especially when it's been a long time. Yeah, so and it's gotta be sad to try and finish an album without Charlie, who was like the heart and soul of the band. And I think that's why it's kind of good that they bring in Ringo Starr. Yeah, and they you know they go way back. They uh there's a song that the uh, Stones did in like sixty three or four called I Wanna Be Your Man. That's a Lennon McCartney Mm -hmm. song. So they hung they hung out back in the day. Okay. So I'm curious to see how this works. I feel out. like there's like a ton of Eiffel Towers back in their day. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Going look, to look, France? Yeah, look mm. that up at home. Not safe for work. No. Yeah, you guys are prudes. There's no way that you don't know that. 
I you uh, don't know that? Oh man, oh, when you look it up, you're gonna laugh. Me. You would, you would, you would. I just murdered. Yeah, but nobody really? got the pony. Got it. Yeah, yeah. You, you did yeah. murder. You murdered yeah. the momentum of yeah. the show. Sorry. I have to know. Text me immediately. Okay. Yeah, it, it, I can't move, move on, on to I'll the next story without. Yeah. All right. Not say fork. All right. I have, to, I have to know. I have to know immediately. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, I won't be able to continue. I sometimes I just want knowledge. Okay. I want knowledge before I can possibly continue. Okay. And I feel bad that with both what? of us don't know. Because uh, you know what, Mike, we're hip. No, we're not. <laughs> the Bob. kids love us. We truly are not. No, we we, are, we, we get jiggy. Uh, but I'm certainly uh, you know someone who likes a good sexual reference. Sure. Uh, I think we know. all do. <laughs> Just trying to figure out. Is it groupie related? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you high five and it looks like the Eiffel Tower. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Pony. Now I get it. Hey. I'm still out. I don't know. Do you want me to call you and tell you into your ear? <laughs> it's yeah. it's we'll a, draw you a picture. It's, no, don't <laughs> please don't draw nothing that can be saved. It's a, it's a it's a uh, think about it. It's, it's a group it's, sex it's, deal. Yeah, it's, so it's two men, one woman, or it could be the whatever you think it's the deal. Yeah, whatever, whatever works for you. grooves. Yeah. Yes. And then you do a high five, dude. Let's do a high five. Nah, I'm not sure. I'm all into this. Eiffel Tower. Yeah. After you know all is said and done, I need more information. Imagine there's a I'll woman love. right here. Okay. I'll as I on. am right now. Yes. Eiffel oh, Tower. Oh, like you're doing that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're congratulating so. each other. All right, Pony. Okay, Pony. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> This is the most awkward explanation we've ever had on the podcast. You know why? Because of him. Pony. It's good job. They're congratulating each other. <laughs> you know, like the building in Paris, the Eiffel well, Tower. You, well, you, your wife is younger. She has to know what that is. No, she doesn't. And you take that back. Well, I'm just saying, like, it's, That's, it's nothing it's, good can I come from that like state. Right, I'm looking oriented. it up online, and, and obviously the pigs have not uh, inundated this because it's all simple Eiffel Tower reference. The beautiful structure right in the middle of Paris. <laughs> I believe it's on the right bank, Mike. I'm going to put sex after it. <laughs> Eiffel Tower sex? Put that in the chat, GPT. Yeah, put that in a go to Reddit. <laughs> All right, it's a sex position. Yes. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. All right, I never knew. Now I do. Okay, I can move on. Yeah. Now you. I know. Thank you very Sorry. much. Uh, here's a guy that knows what we're talking about. <laughs> Bernie Sanders. Yes. Uh, he isn't just angry with capitalism. He also has no patience for your silly TikToks, uh, especially your dance videos. A woman named Taylor Champ was making a video with a doorman on a sidewalk in New York City. Yes. Uh, blocking that sidewalk just as Bernie was trying to get by. Uh, bye. I saw this video. <laughs> Bernie did. I didn't see it yet. It's Bernie funny. didn't smile. He didn't join in. Uh, his resting grump face didn't change for an instant. Uh, but to his credit, he also didn't make a fuss. He just went around them. Yeah. And then he made I, a, He did an Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I just came from the hotel doing an Eiffel Tower <laughs> with Senator Patrick Leahy. <laughs> oh There's a guy. You, you, you know what? Uh, I would love to get the Senator Patrick Leahy comment of the week. If you want to hear a guy that sounds his age. Oh, really? Oh, my okay. God. Why does it smell you like know. Ben Gay? Yeah. yeah. This is where I wish you could look uh, it up, Rob, and uh, play one for us right here. I need okay. more. Pass more uh, salon paws over here. Rihanna had the largest streaming week of her career in the U.S. last week because of her Super Bowl halftime show. That's why they do those. Yep. Uh, she had a total of 166.13 million streams, uh, which was a 156% increase from 65 million the week before. The most streamed song was uh, Umbrella with 9.53 million streams, followed by uh, Lift Me Up from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Uh, then there was Diamonds with uh, 8.44 million. She also became the seventh artist in the last 50 years to have five albums in the top 50 on the Billboard 200 albums chart. Mm. So uh, good uh, good time to be Rihanna with yes. the new baby on the way. I think uh, congratulations to her. Not my cup of tea. Anyway, the uh, push to make a four-day work week the standard has uh, now picked up steam in recent years. Uh, the world's largest four-day work week pilot program has wrapped up. It took place over six months. It was in the UK. 
but it involved researchers from around the globe, including Boston College and the University of Cambridge. 61 companies participated. Nearly 3,000 employees were involved. The companies could choose how they structured it, like giving an extra day off per week or reducing their working days in a year to an average uh, uh, that averages out to 32 hours a week. So it wasn't even 40 hours crammed into four days. Hmm. The only requirement was that they could not cut salaries or benefits. The workers would get 100% of their pay, and in exchange, they'd deliver 100% of their usual work. In the end, it was a resounding success for employees and employers, and it wasn't just about less working hours for the same money. 15% of the employees who participated said no amount of money could convince them to go back to working five days a week. Oh, wow. my there God. Mike? Let us go Jesus. live to the uh, floor of the Senate. Okay. Senator from Patrick Vermont Lahir. is recognized. Mr. President, I brought a lot of bills to the floor here. This is the last one I am bringing to the, uh, I brought to the floor of the Senate. But I, it's one that we have to act quickly on, or we're going to be closing down our, our government. We this bill <laughs> provides. I don't think uh, that we, uh, we are electing. I don't think that our elected officials are are too old. No, I don't I either. Truly, uh, Rob, yes. ten. Way to go. Thank Way you. to go. Mm -hmm. I give you a lot of grief on this show. That is a home run, yeah. Rob Spiewak, that ladies guy. and gentlemen. I have my Eiffel Tower in celebration That's, about it's that. A Grandpa <laughs> Simpson is up there. That's right. <laughs> Shaking uh, his fist. Yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Workers, uh, by the way, regarding this work week, reported a lot of benefits, including better sleep, stress levels, personal lives, mental health. The companies uh, reported that their revenue stayed broadly uh, the same during the six-month trial, but went up 35% on average when compared with a similar period from previous years. Mm. And a they lot also of them dealt... said that it was great to get tanked on Thursday night. <laughs> they also dealt with less turnover, fewer sick days, less burnout. Of the 61 companies, 56, 92% said they were continuing the four-day work week, mm. even though the trial is over. And 18 of them said they've already made the four-day shift permanent. That leaves five companies. Two of them are uh, going to continue experimenting. That's when you know you're screwed. Yeah. If you're working for the... Can, uh, we're going to take another uh, look at it. We don't want to rush into it. Uh. Uh, only three or 5% say they're done with it. And we'll return to five days. Get me the name. Yeah, you know who's going to do it, Mike, names. is the uh, 911 service for Washington, D.C. They're going to <laughs> four, day four days weeks. a week. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, now, a little something, something for all of you. Uh -huh. There are people who love Disneyland. Yes. There are people who hate Disneyland. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. And people who like it once in a while. Uh, but after an exhausting 12 hours at the park, you're good for a year or 10. Uh, then there's 50-year-old... Jeff Reitz, who just earned a Guinness World Record for visiting Disneyland 2,995 days in a row. Ooh. Oh, my God. That is eight years, three months, and 13 days. His run stretched from 2012 to 2020. His last visit was March 13th. His last day, uh, the park was open before closing for the COVID-19 pandemic. He was trying to make it to 3,000 and was only five days away. Uh, this is a while back, right? This is yes. a full year ago. Correct. Yeah, at least. Uh, but he struggled a bit during the pandemic and decided to make changes in his life. One of them was to stop the streak and uh, just move on with his life. Jeff's uh, record was just certified by the Guinness Book of World Records, and he said he'd love to return to Disneyland and uh, show it off, but he hasn't decided on a return date quite yet. This guy, so I guess he's done. It's giving me Forrest Gump vibes, you know? Maybe. Yeah, could be. I saw the video of him, and he's getting pictures taken as he walked in. Mm. Uh, Jeff is uh, living with friends in a shipping container at the back of an abandoned cul-de-sac, <laughs> uh, just past the intersection of Waste of Space Avenue and Bag of Water Lane. <laughs> he spends most days waiting in line at Best Buy for the latest video game releases and tending to his rubber band ball collection. <laughs> Jeff is also known to frequent local blood banks and takes weekly visits to a local dog park where he enjoys sketching beagles. He is a life member of the Star Wars fan club, the Indiana Jones Ark Hunters, and Friends of Groot. 
In his spare that. time, he likes to creep out joggers, drink blue Slurpees, and smell his own fingers. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's uh, Jeff. None of that was true. Uh, we have to take a break. You know, and, uh, my, we'll come back. my dry cleaner also asked me to stop the streak. I don't know if that's related. Stop the streak! <laughs> Uh, a secret room at the Lincoln Memorial. Yes. yes. We'll have it for you. It's a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do that when we come back. You have the pleasure of listening to the Mike O'Mara Show. Mera Show live Saturday, April 15th, 2023 at the legendary House of Blues in New Orleans. Hi, y'all are. I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee. Tickets available now at MichaelMeraShow.com. Ain't it bitchin'? All right, for the last minute, folk, uh, Oscar, um, how are we doing and how many tickets are available for our, I've been joking about it for a couple yes. of months now, but uh, how many tickets do we have available for New Orleans for people? Because I know people make last minute plans yes. in the month of March to go away in April. We have tickets available. We have less than 90 tickets available now. So we've been flat for the whole time. Uh, so that well, means well, I think go we've ahead and get your tickets. Yeah, since uh, the last time. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, go ahead. There are plenty of tickets yeah. available. Plenty go of tickets available. Them. Make it a trip. Um, I I just great literally looked yesterday city, yeah. and booked uh, more hotel rooms for friends, and l- that I bought tickets for. Family members are coming down. Did you go? I'm excited. Adrian? I have my uh, buddies uh, down the street. The Beckers will be yeah. joining us in and New Orleans. I'm very excited. Uh, you'll be shocked. People want to do something fun. Bring your friends. Yeah. Bring That's your friends. We sold over us 400 April tickets already. We'd yep. like to sell it out. You know, Julia uh, is coming. It's the first time she's come to one of our live events ever. So very, she's very, very excited. Very yes. exciting. We'll be at the House of Blues in New Orleans. Uh, join uh, 500 of your friends at a wonderful show. We look forward to seeing you. Here's a message from Sleep Number. Sleep is essential to your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. So what if you could know what's happening in your body while you're sleeping and how your nights are impacting your days? Well, guess what? With the Sleep Number Smart Bed, you can see your biometrics and how well you're sleeping with Sleep IQ technology. And you can get daily tips to help you improve your sleep and energy. Plus, did you know that 8 out of 10 couples prefer a different mattress firmness? The Sleep Number Smart Bed lets you adjust the firmness on each side and then change it whenever you'd like. Partner snoring? Sleep Number has a solution for that, too, with a FlexFit Smart Adjustable Base. You can gently raise your partner's head at the touch of a button to help alleviate snoring. That's absolutely true. My sleep number setting is back to an 85, and I love it. And Carla remains at a 65. Why choose proven quality sleep from sleep number? So you can be at your best for yourself and those you care about most. And now discover special offers for a limited time at your local Sleep Number store or at sleepnumber.com slash T-M-O-S. Now, I think it was back, uh, you know, well over 10 years ago when I uh, had my bachelor party downtown Mm -hmm. and we ended up going to the Washington Monument and seeing these little manhole covers that had little secret chambers that had mini Washington monuments in them. And Jerky told me that it was very exclusive and very secret. And then I saw Saw ten p- pages yeah. of uh, we all pictures thought on the it internet. Was, yeah, they're like land markers or earthquake markers, aren't they? It turns out there was something to do with or erosion. The, something to do with yeah. that. Yeah, I thought when when you first told us this, I was so enamored with the secret Washington. Yeah, that I was like, it's maybe very cool. about it. Maybe there's a Patriot missile battery right on the mall. Yeah, yeah very you interesting. Don't know that it's very much like a Nicolas Cage movie. Yes, yeah. National yeah. Treasure, which I do love those movies. So it was very now, cool. One of the things you came in today, you said that there is a basement at the Lincoln Memorial, and yeah, this I'd isn't secret, it. though, right? It's not secret, but it has been closed off since well before 9-11. My dad has been in it. No. But, yeah. That is not the case. That's what I read in the really? article. Yeah. I definitely took a date there in 2007. Into the basement? Really? Yes. Okay. I was shocked it was available. I was like, this is amazing. At night. It has been shut off for some time, though, is what they say. Now, here's one of the things in this article that totally blew my mind, Mike. They want this project to be done in 2026. And do you realize- By by 2026? Yeah, that's 250 years. That means it's been 50 years since the bicentennial. Mm -hmm. So it's the 250th anniversary of of the United States. What it is is- 
there's a basement. They call it the the Undercroft of okay. the uh, of the memorial. There's. There, I should be clear here. Mm-hmm. What I saw. Yeah. What I've seen mm-hmm. is what is a, a, a tunnel underneath the memorial. Mm-hmm. They have a picture. They have actually. <laughs> a, they have what is a cartoon size penny down there on display. <laughs> Really? Yes, I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay. I am not kidding. Anybody that's ever been there will yeah. corroborate my story. Uh-huh. And uh, like a lot of, uh, what was it? it almost felt like a quick museum, but it wasn't like, I didn't go into a basement. It was almost a tunnel underneath Okay, it. so this is not what they're talking okay, about then, right. because this is 15,000 square feet. Oh, this, this thing is huge. huge. Yes, huge. it's I didn't like see this it, it deep, wasn't that huge. deep, deep bunker yeah. column thing. Yeah, and they've actually, you know, it's been there so long that there are actually stalactites from water seeping oh, down through wow. all it's got dirt floors yep. and Haven't concrete seen that. walls. Yep. Reminds me of the sports fan uh, bar in uh, Georgia. So they're going to start By the way, hanging from underneath are stalactites. Yeah, from from the that water sounds. seeping through. So they're going to wow. start construction or the old bayou next month. Looked like that, right Mike? You know the bayou. Yeah. <laughs> I closed the bayou. You did? We were the yeah. last show at the yeah. bayou. Yeah. Oh, last yes. show at the bayou mm-hmm. in Washington DC. But oh, the um, sunny days. That was something back in the day. Uh, uh, anyway, it uh, is. A, they're going to start construction next month, and they hope to have it done by July of 2026. Mm-hmm. It's going to have bathrooms. It's going to have an immersive Lincoln Museum. Oh, it's going I'm to in. have a gift shop. This is great. And this is just some been of the uh, features underneath are pictures that have that the original workers drew on the support columns. That's they amazing. Have cartoons That's that they, they cool. drew. Yeah, that is sketches really amazing. On support column by the workers who built the monument. One of the drawings depicts characters from the old Mutt and Jeff cartoon, which started running in 1907. Yeah. It was Lincoln's That's favorite cartoon. Yeah, until they were canceled in 1920. But the thing that's wow. so wild about it is if you think the fact... <laughs> were they racist? I don't even yeah, know. I'm sure I, I it was. Know. I have no idea. <laughs> you know, that's a, a massive, massive structure built on a swamp. So they probably had to do some amazing engineering underneath to make sure it didn't seep down in. And that's yeah. all the undercroft that does that, right? How big I just don't know why it's so huge. Maybe, well, the maybe the memorial support is it. big. Yeah, the memorial itself is big. This is 15,000 square feet that they're going to open as the exhibit. That's pretty damn big. Yes, yeah, it is. It, it, it is actually fascinating that we, and this isn't the bit that They had just, tours before 9-11. They had tours. Yeah, I just don't, I don't know- I feel lucky that um, I was able to pr- propose to Shannon at, at the top of the Washington Monument. Thank you to, to Officer uh, Jerky, uh, as I like to call him. And didn't didn't you say that you say yes or you're stuck up here? Wasn't that the whole thing? No, I didn't. I didn't uh, <laughs> my wife is not held hostage. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how Bob Hope used to treat but the sh- girls in Vietnam. <laughs> I was I was fortunate enough. That, I was fortunate enough that the elevator was working. That is great. But it's constant. What other monuments are constant? Like. You're done working on it, then you start at the bottom again and start over again. Like it's always constant maintenance. It has maintenance, to maintain maintenance, it, yeah. maintenance, maintenance. Yeah. Maintenance. Have you ever right? seen the pictures That's of the... where they stopped building it? I think it was for the War of eighteen twelve, and for a while there was half the obelisk oh, there. Wow. It's, and you can see where the brick changes color on the it. The Capitol, Mike, right now is being worked on. Yeah, right? yeah. When is that well, that be seems over? like that seems like every that's been fifty every years. years. Well, they're so gonna they're, they it's got a fle- paint and it's uh, the fleecing of America. It's not the fleecing of America. The it looks like takes- about two 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 levels down. This giant space underneath. It's, it's so uh, cool. It's, it's so cool. I drive by them. I see the Lincoln mm-hmm. Memorial twice a day, and I always look at it. And I always say that is pretty awesome. It's still cool. It is. Okay, but the thing I figured is out by looking there, at the pictures what it is. The depth of it is like you would build. A superstructure for a high rise. The depth of it is for the columns, for to support ah, to support to the yeah. structure. Yeah, I would That's pay. But if you go to the Lincoln yes. Memorial and don't just drive by it, mm-hmm. it's a very very impressive structure. I mean, it is much bigger yeah. than you think it's going to be. Lincoln himself is huge. It, it's it's a, it's, it's a, like it's a must, it's a must see. Yeah, it's, it's just, gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It is really cool. I see, when I was active, I would ride my bike um, through there, mm-hmm. and then. And you just see all these tourists, and this is this is why people come come to the city. Yeah, beautiful. I've seen the Lincoln Memorial, been there m- multiple times, and on my bucket list, uh, other than Lincoln Memorial, only one other monument I want to see, What's that? and that's the uh, Eiffel Tower. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It all comes full circle, ladies and gentlemen. Lincoln did one my with hand Booth. Out like that. I yeah. think right before the shooting. <laughs> yeah, it's all the different columns that got me confused. You know, <laughs> arms, legs, akimbo. <laughs> 
Uh, we have to take a break. Pony uh, says, I'll draw you a picture. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me show you. We'll be right back. Hold on. Had a great drive to school with my kid who was talking about Harvard. Said he wants to be a lawyer. Dad, I think I want to be a lawyer. I said, why is that? He said, because I like to argue. He I think could be, you know it. what? Kid lawyer. Your Honor, I object. I'll allow it. Have you been hurt on a podcast? It's no time to play grab ass, fella. It's time to get tough and call the law offices of Michael William O'Mara, kid attorney. So an Irishman walks into a pub. O'Mara is on the case, and you'll get the money you deserve. The Mike O'Mara Bonus Show is so funny, it should be illegal. Get a bonus show subscription today through the link at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Michael William O'Mara, kid attorney. Oh, yeah, it's driving me nuts. He knows all about the birds and the bees, but it's his opponents in the courtroom who are really f- you can't handle the truth uh twitch we miss you i know God, i loved it when you spotlighted my kid like that uh we're you know by the way most of these promos you're hearing uh leading up to our goodbye for twitch on uh on monday our tribute to our friend mark riddell and uh th- that's his voice you hear on most of these promos and we thought it would be nice to uh play those for you so uh thanks to him again welcome back to the michael O'Mara show i love great branding uh this is small but you can see dad grass mm-hmm. right there yeah beautiful beautifully done labels for a great product. Uh, you know who it, it discovered really it this week is Mrs. Spiewak. Ooh. Oh, wonderful. Because you she's, know? You know, they've got a couple new students at the school and her days have been a little tedious. Mm-hmm. And she comes home and she says, I'm going to try one of these. And she has been so agreeable. It's well, fantastic It's stuff. like the good old days, yeah. uh, like the classic joints of grass that your folks used to spark up. Mellow grooves, daddy Dad grass has old school joints that are low in THC, high in CBD, so you can chill out and lighten up the old-fashioned way. Dad grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. And if you want the toke without the smoke, dad grass also has CBD gummies just in this little mm, jar right here. Tasty. Made with the same high-quality hemp. They're delicious, easy to dose, and the effects come on smooth. Chill out without getting stoned. It's like having a glass of wine, not the whole bottle. It's absolutely out of sight. We think you're going to love it. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 21 and over and ship right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS. Go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash TMOS. It's groovy, baby. Sound. 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 We call this stereophonic sound. Sound town. And don't be confused. The Lincoln Memorial has a basement, but there's no basement at the Alamo. No. <laughs> hey. <laughs> From Pee Wee. And we didn't win. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Hello, Hello Pee Wee. Your bicycle's in the basement of the Alamo. I remember. <laughs> so great. Large Marge. Yeah. Um, is Brittany losing her mind again, or is she just having fun? Okay. She did a video on the Instagram where she keeps talking about a dress that was made, and the the cuts are weird. It's I didn't do any editing to this. She's using a put upon voice, and uh, she also Mike. She's back to being barefoot, and her mm. feet look unclean. Okay, so last week, guys, I made a dress. It's really proud. A girlfriend helped me sew it. They sent me a dress I didn't have to make myself. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm just saying. Okay, now I'm so proud. I didn't even have to make it myself. Thank you, company, for sending me this dress. So, guys, I just want you to know, if I shut down my Instagram, do not call the cops. Don't ever be a roller coaster. Never be a roller coaster! Huh. This is the insight I have on um, Britney Spears. All right. And if you recall, I said once you put this butterfly net away... I do recall with this. the conservatorship. Yes, mm-hmm. there's gonna be you, you. You you made your bed yesterday on TMZ. I watched the nightly news. Then I watched TMZ. It's a great show, Mike. What on, it is? It's TMZ, a bunch of hard hitting journalists DVR, in a news and then room. I go they talk to about current mad events. money on Kramer. My right. wife thinks I'm a loser, but that's what I consume myself with when I go home. Yes. Okay. And yesterday they said that. There was a an intervention planned. I'm sorry if you have this in your YouTube. I don't. Know about I don't. Okay, no, so no, had no, a, they just... had a planned intervention this weekend. She sounds unstable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they catch her attorney, 
like any attorney, he looks and he looks. And they're like, uh, why, why'd you guys can't? The, the photographer's like, why'd you guys cancel the intervention? And they're, they're like, the, the lawyer doesn't say anything. There's no comment. If they, if the attorneys are skulking around trying to create an intervention for this this young lady, and I don't know if she's young anymore, yeah, but this lady, she's sixty two. Uh, <laughs> then there's an issue at hand. There's yeah. an issue. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I, it's I, odd. I, it's uh, the behavior's always been odd. Yeah, that's very, why very they odd. had the butterfly net. Yeah, you need that butterfly net sometimes. Yeah, and uh, kind of uh, vindicates a lot of people involved in her. Uh, you know, in her orbit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would yeah. think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Well, I'll tell you who's not odd and who is stable is my favorite redheaded Mac Macintosh lookalike, Ed Sheeran. Yes. Uh, he is coming out with a hot sauce, which is no big deal, except that he wrote a jingle for it. And I like the jingle. I love my food. That's no secret. But the older I get, the more I need spice. So we've developed a hot sauce called Tingly Ted's. Tingly I've developed Ted's. this over time with some expert hot sauce makers. And we've basically whittled it down to the best flavors, the best chilies. And I wanted it the same consistency as ketchup. And I wanted something that took pride of place on the shelf or in the fridge that didn't just get relegated to the cupboard with all the other hot sauces. I love it. I carry it in my suitcase wherever I go. I have it on breakfast. I have it on lunch. I have it on dinner. I have it on after show food. I have it on snacks you can have it with anything literally anything except maybe not bananas don't don't do bananas can't wait to bring it out i hope you guys like it oh and also i have written a theme tune check it out Tingly Ted's hot sauce, Mike. What is it called? Tingly Ted. Tingly Ted. Mike. Tingly Ted. It makes your tongue tingle. Tingly Ted makes your tongue tingle. <laughs> you I mean, now I want to pick it up. I do too. This is great. <laughs> I do well, too. you know what makes me want this is my rudeness. Yeah. When he says it's the consistency of ketchup. One of the things I don't like about hot sauce is runny. How, watery. How yeah. thin it is. Yeah. Is runny the, like the term? Yeah, I'm runny. Like, this is watery. Runny. Yeah, it's runny. That's not the case with Tingly Ted. No. Tingly Ted makes your tongue <laughs> I love a good jingle. (laughs) Yeah, a good bad jingle. A good bad jingle. Uh, Here is something that I found uh, helpful, and I can't wait to implement it. A TikToker says this is a good way to get past any phone tree in an amazingly large company. Mm. You know, you always have to hit zero, hit one, hit two. Check this out. Time is money in my business, and when I'm waiting on hold with Expedia or American, Delta, Verizon, AT&T, they're literally wasting my time when I only have one question to ask them. This information I'm going to share with you is definitely going to save you a lot of time, and literally 90% of the time I get through in less than two minutes, and they help me, and I'm on my way. Let's say you call American Airlines or Wells Fargo, you call up the customer service number, you get to the main menu, and you click zero pound, zero pound, zero pound, and you go all the way through to a customer service rep just like that. This little piece of information has saved me so much time and aggravation and frustration, so try it out, and it worked about 90% of the time, and only on the larger companies. <laughs> so zero pound, zero pound, zero That's pound. That's a hack right I through. heard. I can't Boy, wait to there. try it. I've been there recently. I hope it works. I really do. And Mike, this last one I saved for you because you are not a phobic flyer anymore, but you're an uncomfortable flyer. Yes. And you don't want anything out of the ordinary on your flight that's going Precisely. to upset you. Exactly. Um, like this guy who thought it was a good idea, and we close with this, to right. break up with his girlfriend as the plane was taking off. And he was going to tell her oh, that it's no. over. And this is, how would, Mike, how That's would That's like the maximum stress time for trapped. even normal folks. Yes. So right? the plane's about Everybody's to take off. Everybody's got a little edge at right. that time. How would you like to be preparing for takeoff, and this is what the person next to you sounds like? <laughs> For this girl. Oh, I do too. Oh, <laughs> you are. I'm, all, I'm on the girl side. I, feel I am too. We're sensitive. Look yeah. at him. He's not. He He's doesn't not. care. He, well, why do you automatically assume she's not at fault? She's probably a problem. <laughs> if you're going to act like that on a plane, forget it. <laughs> That's it. Ah, that's a nice warm ending to this show today. We got to get out of here. Nobody was uh, hurt. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new episode. Whew.
Uh, you got me there. Uh, for Rob Speedwack and Oscar Santana, this is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. <laughs> Makes your tongue tingle. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Hello. You can't dance fast enough for me. Do you understand? Okay, play it one more time. Go on, you know you want to. Play it one more time. <laughs> there you go. That's how we had the end of the show this week. Bye, everybody.